John William Cooper. John Cooper is one of the most dangerous serial killers to ever walk Great Britain. He was somehow one of the contestants on this popular game show at the time of his rampage. And as creepy as it sounds, no one at the time knew anything about his terror. He's the cause for the death of many innocent residents, and the evilness of his actions has no limit. This is the story of John Cooper, the coastal murderer. His background. John William Cooper was born on the 3rd of September 1944 and grew up in Milford Haven, a town located in Pembrokeshire in the coast of Wales that's renowned for its coastal beauty and nature trails. That's why his homicides were nicknamed across the nation the Pembrokeshire Murderers, or the Coastal Murders. There isn't much information about Cooper's early life, but everyone who knew him closely admitted that he was a troubled kid, and he was famous for stealing. Between the ages of 17 and 21, when he was only a teenager, he was charged with many crimes, including theft of a vehicle, assaulting a police officer, being drunk and being disorderly, and last but not least, assault occasioning actual bodily harm or ABH, which simply means aggravated assault in Wales. Bottom line is, he always found trouble. When he got a bit older at the age of 34, he became a farm laborer. He was a gambler and a drinker. He spent his free time in English pubs scratching gambling tickets. He always participated in sports gambling competitions, and in 1978, he actually won 90,000 pounds, which equals to over 500,000 pounds in today's money, or approximately 635,000 US dollars, plus a fancy car worth 4,000 pounds at the time. While this amount of money won was great news for him, it was supposedly the start of his downfall and the beginning of his terror. Crimes like most contest winners, John Cooper spent most of his winnings on useless things instead of saving them or investing them in something that makes him more money. He doubled down on his drinking habits and became an alcoholic. According to an unnamed friend of his, John developed a huge drink and gambling habit after his winnings went to his head. It was a life-changing amount of money, and I saw a real change in him. He spent most of it in pubs and bookies. People were scared of him and he got into a lot of fights. As his money dried up, he started the robberies. As Cooper spent more and more of his money, his pockets were getting emptied, so he thought about going back to his old hobby that got him in jail when he was a teenager, robbing. From vehicle theft to public disturbances, this dangerous cocktail inevitability led him down a dark path of violent murders throughout the tranquil landscapes of southwest Wales. And indeed, on the 22nd of December, in 1985, a brother and sister named Richard, aged 58, and Helen Thomas, 54, were tragically murdered on their farm in Pembrokeshire, Wales, as a result of a burglary. The two victims were, in fact, wounded by gunshots. The tight-knit community was left shocked and fearful as this horrific crime shook the peaceful countryside. Four years later, on the 5th of July, another tragedy struck when Peter and Gwenda Dixon, a couple who were simply enjoying a walk in the Welsh landscape, fell victim to a similar fate. One of them was robbed of their belongings while the other was subjected to a horrifying sexual assault before both met a chilling end. Tim Dixon, the two victims' son, made a public appeal, and a possible suspect was never fully revealed. It has also been revealed that this man used Mr. Peter Dixon's cash machine card. Of course, the mastermind behind these crimes turned out to be none other than John Cooper. During his reign of terror, he even assaulted a group of teenagers in 1996, causing them significant physical and emotional trauma. It was confirmed that five teenagers met a man, wearing a balaclava and having a shotgun. On the 6th of March, Cooper asked the youngsters for some money. When they replied that they didn't have any money to give him, he threatened the boys with a shotgun in hand and then started assaulting two girls of the group. His fall. Even though he was arrested in 1998, initially the justice system could only convict Cooper for burglaries, leaving the acts like murder and sexual assault unsolved due to insufficient concrete evidence. Nonetheless, his criminal record shows us that he was no stranger to breaking the law. By the way, it's truly astonishing how John Cooper managed to carry out his activities for such a very long time, especially considering that a crucial piece of evidence was found, in front of everyone while they didn't know it yet. In May 1989, Cooper appeared on the TV game show Bullseye. His face was seen by millions of viewers across the country. Little did he know that these harmless moments of fame would come back to haunt him as those very images were later used as evidence against him. The audience thought he was a normal guy, but little did they know that behind the smiling facade lay a cold-blooded killer responsible for heinous crimes that would only come to light years later. By comparing his appearance on the show with a sketch of a suspect in the Dixon murders, investigators were sooner or later able to identify him as the individual responsible for these horrifying crimes. Of course, the investigation had to take a long time to confirm everything about him. John Cooper's horror remained unsolved until 2006. In February that year, a determined and seasoned detective, 
Steve Wilkins, returned to the Dyfed Palace police force with over three decades of experience and a remarkable analytical mind. Honed during his tenure at the National Criminal Intelligence Service NCIS, Wilkins turned his attention to John Cooper's case, finding serious parallels with two haunting cold case files. Thanks to advancements in forensic science and DNA analysis, which were not available in the 1980s and 1990s, Wilkins and his team made significant breakthroughs in linking Cooper to the crimes. The killer's blood was found on some of the victim's bodies and, crucially, his weapon was matched to several unsolved crimes from previous decades. This breakthrough was the key to finally tying him to the horrific murders, sexual assaults, and rapes he had managed to escape justice for. John Cooper soon found himself back behind bars as the police presented overwhelming evidence against him, thanks to Steve Wilkins' hard work. In 2011, the courtroom finally delivered justice, sentencing him to life imprisonment for his unforgivable acts committed two decades earlier. In January 2021, Wilkins told the BBC that he and his team were meticulously examining over 5,000 pieces of evidence and a staggering 2 million pieces of paper. Despite the daunting task, the detective was buoyed by the success stories of other unsolved cases being solved nationally. In fact, he said, I feared that if Cooper was responsible for the previous murders, he would undoubtedly strike again. Dark Legacy The sentencing brought closure to the victims' families and marked the end of a decades-long quest for justice. John William Cooper's dark and twisted journey to conviction has been the subject of several gripping documentaries that have captivated audiences worldwide. The documentaries delve into the intricate web of evidence, witness testimonies, and the tireless efforts of law enforcement that ultimately led to his capture. These documentaries not only focused on the crimes themselves, but also shed light on the impact they had on the local community and the lingering fear that gripped the region during the years of his reign of terror. One of the most notable ones are the Pembrokeshire Murders, a gripping three-part series that masterfully unravels the complex investigation that eventually brought Cooper to justice. This suspenseful production piece showcases the meticulous detective work, forensic breakthroughs, and the collaborative efforts of law enforcement personnel who refuse to give up on seeking the truth. Another riveting documentary shedding light on the case is Dark Land, Hunting the Pembrokeshire Killer. This chilling exploration not only recounts the known facts of the murders, but also delves into the psychological profile of John William Cooper. The documentary takes viewers on a harrowing journey into the mind of a cold-blooded killer, exploring the factors that may have contributed to his monstrous actions. Cooper became well-known on the relatively small country of Wales, and his name echoes horror among its people. And with that, we end John William Cooper's case. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe with the notification bell on. Also, share your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.